Hello folks, GLHF says Karateka, good luck, have fun, and I'm sure you will have fun with this cast today. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I am told this is going to be a very exciting 5v5 game here on a Neuroxis randomly generated map. If we look at the balance between the two teams, uh, it says a 20 point difference here in the scoreboard, but if you look at the unrounded numbers, there's actually a 35 point difference in the total, so that's a 7 point difference on average between the North team and the South team players, and that's in favour of Team 1, the North team. Team 1 is, is slightly ahead on ELO, but that's 7 point difference. If you consider that the bottom ranked player on Team 2 is actually about 200 below the bottom ranked player on Team 1, and I think the bottom ranked player doesn't actually make that much difference to the scores, so I think that actually balances it out again in favour of Team 2, so I think we're going to see the most balanced game ever today. But to look at those players in a bit more detail, we have on the north side, Team 1, we have uh, Wi-Fi in the far north here in the fetching yellow color. We have Karateka who submitted the cast to the Replays to Cast channel. Here on the right, we have Raider who is the, the junior player on this team and they are at the back there in the eco slot and they're just putting down their second factory which is gonna be an air factory. We have in the mid green here, also in the kind of land facing slot, we have Plunder. And then we have Aranai here in the lime green. And so the spread of uh, ELOs in this team from Wi-Fi at 2174 to Raider at 1510 is 664 points, which is quite a spread. Racially, the team's not very diverse. We have Raider, the, the, the junior player, is Cyber, and all the other four are the Eon Whereas on the other team, we have a bit more diversity. All four races are represented here. We have in the land position, Castaway, uh, who is in the white. We have a lavender player here, which is Jib80, who I'm just going to call Jib. Maybe it's Gib, but uh, I'm going to show my Quake Roots there, who's uh, also put down second air. Uh, second air as well for Castaway. And the first air scout's coming out as well for the player who's called Paver on the screen, but we know them as Rowan. Long-standing feature of the FAF community in the southmost position. We have in the navy blue, Too Low, who's getting their first bomber out. So we'll just go and follow that when something interesting happens. And then at the back here, we have RGBVCMG, who is the junior player on this team at 13.04. And between Rowan, who's the senior player, and uh, RGB, we have a 995 ELO spread. So yeah, that's, that's 300 more spread than you get on the North team. So the South team is repping the stalk there with their spread. And people who aren't British and therefore have margarine that's not called stalk will not get that joke at all, but never mind. We do have first ships coming out, uh, both for Too Low and for uh, Wi-Fi on the north. And it looks like the, they're planning on dropping on this uh, kind of funny-shaped island that looks like one of those uh, one of those optical illusions. Is it a candlestick or is it two people facing each other? But the drop from Too Low is going to reach their corresponding island first. Four mass points on this island. And while we're talking about mass, we'll just have a look at the reclaim. And there's about a thousand reclaim, maybe two thousand overall on either side of the map. Not much in the center to fight over. So we haven't seen comms coming straight up. But there's mass points spread all over the place. So there's certainly territory to, to want over here. Uh, and we have these other islands that only have one mass point each. And, what, like a thousand reclaim just on their own. We have a bomber coming out to deal with this expansion. And they've mopped up all of the engineers. Didn't quite get the transport. There is a factory already down, so they will be able to make engineers and rebuild this. But that's going to slow down that expansion. While on the other side... Both teams have dropped engineers, but uh, these engineers are on their tea break. Oh no, they're, they're getting their land factory up, so we'll see some fights for this land 
shortly. We see plunder in uh, what I'm going to call olive green coming up to the center here. And they're kind of forming up, not really harassing yet, but they're going to get harassed by Castaway's army, which is only marginally bigger. So this is going to be a very tough engagement. But the naval warfare has started already with Aaron and I getting an early uh, sub out as well as a couple of frigates um, possibly going to blockade this island, try to prevent any more drops over here from the south team. And this is uh, also what Wi-Fi has done with this frigate on this island. But uh, if we uh, if we go to the center, we see an engagement was actually kind of missed here with uh, Plunder's units running away to the south before they could be engaged by Castaway. Um, Castaway pushing up and going to be taking the territory that's been left to them there. Only a few more units to mop up. But now we see Plunder's Colm walking forward with Wi-Fi trading close behind. And also Aaron and I coming in from the left side here. So the North team definitely values the center here. They've got both the mass points on their side of it. Uh, there's two mass points unclaimed on the south side. Um, so this is going to be hotly contended to. Oh, actually, we also have a fourth comp coming in the form of Karateka, who's walking across the water here. Um, but it looks like they're going to bypass the center and just kind of stay over here behind their navy while this big naval engagement goes down. Karateka obviously hoping to lock whichever player or players was in the water here out of water quickly, but there are too many factories up. I, I think they're going to have trouble achieving that while these factories are churning out subs and frigates. Um, so if we look at this island, it's not looking great for Tulo, who did manage to secure the land, but is going to lose it to frigates now. Uh, assuming, yeah, they can reach the other factory. So they're going to lose everything to these frigates. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a no man's land for a while. Uh, whereas on the mirroring island, the uh, exact opposite is happening where Jib from the south has uh, successfully secured the land but is being bombarded by frigates. Now, maybe this one can't quite reach, so they might have got away with that a bit better. And so I know we have four comms, four comms from one team, all in the center here. But none of them really doing very much. Um, a bit of a naval engagement over here in the south. It has been Pung. Um, both teams pretty even on reclaim so far, about 10k each. And economically overall, not much difference there. Uh, like a, an 8-9 mass point difference, which is not much when you're on 250. So it's fairly even so far, and this is shaping up to be a long game. Um, it looks like neither team's really going to run away with it. We've seen some very mirrored, very balanced battles. Um, this naval combat is looking a bit static here, but it looks like the subs have the upper hand and they're chasing Aronai's navy away. Do wonder how many of those are going to make it back to safe waters. Uh, a cruiser up there. Oh, sorry, that's not a cruiser. It's the T1 attack boat um, for Aronai. Uh, but then we also, if we look here, we have T3 Air coming out of, uh, is that RGB? It's hard to tell the color. Yeah, coming out of RGB. And there's a scout there first, but that means the, uh, maybe the Strat Snipe can't be far behind. If we look at what they've built out, they've built up their ASF. Not really a lot of uh, fighting going on at T1. We did see a few bombers come out and there are still a few hanging around. No big inti duels. And the air players obviously taking advantage of the number of buffers they have between them and the enemy to, uh, to go straight to T3 uh, on both sides there. Radar going for a... Basically, he's going straight for the air grid. They've reclaimed their first land factory that they started with um, to focus on. Uh, they've got up their T3P gen. They're getting a second T3 air factory. 
And it looks like they're probably just going to be building air for a while, getting their mexes upgraded. If we look at the corresponding player on the other side, not quite so advanced. They're getting their first T3P gen up now. They've got a T2 one, though, so um, they, they invested a bit more at T2. However, the Com Army, it's all I can describe it as. On the front line here, four comms walking forward. Not really much to fight them. There was Castaway's com, uh, who has just decided to walk away from that. A bit of scouting going on. Uh, the, um, the, the Inties here made to go after it. Kind of, oh, look, busy, the scout's there. But they, they just not really chased after it. So that scout's going to get away with so much scouting there. Uh, well, we also see a drop behind enemy lines here. All flares. They're going to get these uh, engineers. There's two engineers who still have quite a bit of reclaim in this area. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, maybe just under 100. They could have uh, assisted these mexes, and they could have rebuilt them. Like, getting the engineers first is great if you're going to follow up with the mexes. Really going to slow down the enemy's rebuild. T T1 mexes, are, of course, so cheap that the, the actual mass cost from losing one is is not that great but it's the time that you don't have any mass income from that mass point that really costs you um and they're gonna push downwards here towards rgb and that could really uh, hurt rgb's attempt to catch up in air Still, naval engagements going on. A lot of hover spam out for Karateka. Uh, and we've got T2 attack subs. Sorry, submarine hunters out for Wi-Fi. And uh, do I see any other T2 Navy? No, I don't. Uh, I do see a lot of T2 engineers. So there is a shipyard here um, that's been upgraded. Oh, and we have a destroyer coming out for Rowan. Uh, who I'm just going to keep calling Rowan because everybody knows them as Rowan. Um, it might be a bit confusing. Don't tune into the stream halfway through. Just say that. Uh, we also got a destroyer coming out here for Wi-Fi, so that's going to even the odds a bit. Um, however, it is on the opposite lake, so we're not going to see destroyer on destroyer action immediately. A bit of com on com battle here, but it's just it's just love bites really. Um, neither com seriously in danger at this stage, and you do have to see like, where is it? Where are the land armies? There's been so much naval battle. Nobody really wants to push by land. There's a handful of blazes here uh, for plunder. Um, Mostly shield generators. I think if you've got more shield generators than uh, than tanks, there's something wrong with your balance. Though I guess if you're going to be mostly fighting navy, that, that could well be worthwhile. Tactical missile launcher. It is not loaded. It might have fired already and I didn't see it. It is now loaded. wonder where that's going to be targeting perhaps some of these mexes. Uh, this one was taken out by commander action. Uh, but we do also have gunships coming out here, Volthu, for um, RGB. It's not going to get very far in this direction. Uh, well, the Inties are flying away. They could be attacking it. Is it going to right-click the comp? No, it's taking the stealth field generator, and it's taking the TML. They really do not want that TML there. I can only assume it did do some damage before that I didn't see. But it did go down to a mixed Inti and ASF force there. Um, also, Raider bringing in their ASFs just as a show of faith. We also got torpedo bombers coming out over here. Um, not a lot of cruisers mixed into the Navy so far. I mean, we've, we've only just seen the first T2 ships coming out. So you wouldn't expect a lot of cruisers. So these are going to have free reign for a bit. There are quite a few frigates, though. And so they do go down eventually. Um, also seeing another drop coming out from Wi-Fi. Almost off-mapping there. Very sneaky, sneaky. Um, is it going to drop in the same place as last time? Oh, yeah, no, they're going to skip out this area, um, which has only just been rebuilt. That actually could be a perfectly lucrative drop, but they're going to go for the juicier T2 mexes in the bottom here. 
I don't want to zoom any in any further. Oh, it looks like they've been scouted as all of the ASFs are coming in to counter it, but they're going to find the transport has already left. And these tanks, just a few T1 units, are just going to keep taking out T2 mexes until there's something to stop them. Um, they might get bombed by this bomber. That is if Jib is... Uh, I mean, the massing T1 bombers here, I feel like it's a bit late in the game to be massing T1 bombers. However, they, they are pretty meta at the moment as an anti-experimental thing instead of gunships, just because you can get far more numbers for the same mass. So we might see that a bit later. Uh, maybe that's what the plan is with those. Maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just a bit of delayed play. Uh, we do see a T3 gunship here out for Raider already. Um, really so much going on in this game it's kind of hard to to keep up uh we also see a very brave like when when the enemy's got t2 navy and their navy is kind of close to you do you really want to be getting a gun upgrade while you're underwater mm, i wouldn't but too low wood and they're gonna get away with it it looks like they're gonna finish off while this navy's well out of range to do anything a bit of uh, cruiser combat going down over here. And all of these T1 bombers are actually come out to take out these Tech 2, uh, Tech 2 land forces. And the ASFs we just see over the other side of the screen, they're coming in to respond. Oh, no, it looked like they've landed there. And that might be the end of the T1 bomber span. No, no, the ASFs have turned around. They don't want to go near the cruisers, probably. I would be wary of going near the cruisers. So I'm going to assume they are as well. But the, the long-range missiles of this cruiser are just firing everywhere and doing a lot of attrition. The commanders from the north side really pushing down a lot further. Plunder just taking a quick walk through the water and coming up on land here. Some T1 PD being spammed up to try and counter there. But that is not going to stop Plunder from plundering these mexes. But if we look just a little further south, we see where Plunder's really laying down the hurt on Tulo's main base here. And they've penetrated right inside it. Nothing here is safe. And this is really bad for Tulo. A couple of destroyers coming in from the south to defend here, but that's it's just not enough. So meanwhile, after getting gunned, Tulo has just decided to walk up onto water and take out Aronai's expansion here. There's still one mass point at the bottom. Are they going to walk down all the way there? And what's this? Tulo has given all their navy and most of their base over to Rowan. I don't know why. That seems a really odd decision. Maybe they're planning on starting a new base. Maybe they're just going to ramble it up. Who knows? Don't know what the reasoning behind that is. All they've kept is this row of P-Gens. Uh, perhaps figuring they've got mass over there, but they don't have power to start with. That would be the expensive thing to start up. Um, however, we do see uh, an air fight happening over Navy. More of those T-1 bombers coming in to try and deal with this Navy. However, T-1 bombers when the enemy has ASFs in the area, um, there are none left. That's all I have to say about that. And again, a bit of dancing here. No clear winner in this engagement. I think both sides are just funneling more units in. But we do have torpedo bombers coming out from Wi-Fi. And perhaps they are going to... No, no, they're just going to fly over a cruiser. They did drop quite a few torpedoes, and they put a lot of damage into that cruiser. Uh, perhaps something nearby can finish it off. It's not regening very fast. And there goes the cruiser. That has made the skies a lot safer for the, the north side here. Obviously, there's still the frigates in the area. But if you look at how much that frigate has been firing at this torpedo bomber and it's taken off like a quarter of its health, it's only just got into the yellow. So torpedo bombers have a lot more playtime over these ships to drop lots of torpedoes and sink them all. And so I think we're going to see a lot more torpedo bombers coming out for Wi-Fi in this area. Also, I remember some cruisers and some torpedoes, uh, some destroyers forming up over there. 
Also a naval engagement going on on this side. With a bit of land. And on this side, it looks like the North team is pushing back Rowan. Um, however, shield boats now coming up for Rowan, but the placement is not great. Uh, look at these T2, they're already inside the shield. Um, and again, a unit transfer going on, so all of this, all of the naval force, even though some of it is land, um, it can all be uh, controlled by one player. Also, I'm liking the T3, uh, oops, the T3 mobile sonar here. It's being sent around. Uh, yeah, it has torpedo defense, so it's just, it is a good thing to have in the area. And of course, you always want sonar in the area where you're fighting. So really interesting to, I don't know if it was deliberate to send that down there with the Navy, but it's, uh, it's a really interesting, it added something interesting to the fight, whether it was a deliberate choice or a uh, misclick. It looks like, however, on this side, South's really winning the naval warfare. There's not any torpedo bombers over them anymore, and they've really managed to push up a lot as far as this island. They could... Oh, yeah, they've got engineers coming out here. They could take this match point. It won't be very safe, but, you know, payback time for a T1 mix is pretty short. They're killing these units while they're doing nothing. Just destroyers laying gunfire down onto them from out of their range. That's got to be sad. If you are a Blaze, you do not want to die this way. And now they're doing it to these, and they are running away, which is a bit more sensible than how the last ones responded or failed to respond. Also, Aaron and I seems to have been pushed back a bit here by Rowan. So, actually, it's looking good for the South team on both sides. Ah, this tentacle missile launch has been turned off. Perhaps no more targets in range, thanks to the pushing out here. This area is not very safe for the North team because of how many destroyers there are. A lot of these shots are going into the terrain, but not all of them. So, that's, that's got to be uh, causing a bit, of, a bit of health attrition. It's taking a lot off those shields. Gunship now coming in, and there's so many ASFs nearby that the North really can't counter these gunships unless they want to take the air fight. Uh, maybe they do. Maybe they don't know how much air is there. They do know how much air is there. They are not taking the fight, and I can't blame them, really. At a quick glance, it looks pretty even. So, I think this land push is going to die... Uh, interesting line of T1 PDs queued up here. I'm not sure I would want to be building that. I think we're kind of past the stage where T1 PDs are going to do a lot. But then I'm not Castaway and I'm not 1900, so I don't understand what the motivation is for that. And I'm sure there's a plan behind it. The most intense naval engagement is happening on this side of the water for now. And it's mostly the same as before, except the green uh, flotilla, hovertilla, whatever you want to call it, is uh, is actually pushing in this time. And so they are getting some value, even though they are dying quite handily to those uh, beam destroyers. They, they did exact quite a cost there, and they've managed to extend the push right up to the shipyards. Shipyards taking a few shots from the Northern Navy, but none of them really in danger of being destroyed here. And uh, there's a whole line of them out over here. If you wanted to get rid of some of the shipyards, you'd attack around this side, not attack where the fleet is. You know, the idea is not just to remove the shipyards, but to weaken the naval strength as well. Sorry about the occasional pauses in sound there, as I am coming off a bit of a cough, which is perfectly fine this morning, but uh, obviously a lot of talking is not making that any better. But here we see, actually, the, the situation's reversed from the Navy on this side, as Rowan's Navy has pushed almost all of the way up to Aronai's shipyards. 
and Aaron and I definitely exacting a price. Uh, Rowan kind of having to pay rent for having his fleet this close, but it's looking pretty dangerous for Aaron and I. Aaron and I just has to full defend here. There's nowhere to fall back to, and a few torpedo bombers coming out to try and help, but there are cruisers in this mix, and they, they don't get a second pass. And so now the shipyards are starting to go down, and this is looking pretty bad for Aaron and I, because obviously once the Navy gets into here, all of this is in danger, and that's basically Aaron and I's whole base. And Aaron and I, like, currently investing in ARAS, perhaps wanting some eco that is not about to get destroyed by these ships. Speaking of eco, it's pretty balanced there. However, uh, the South team has almost doubled the reclaim of the North team at 40k, perhaps taking better naval engagements there, uh, or perhaps because the incursions from the North side into this area have been repelled and the reclaim has been mopped up. Definitely it's Rowan and Castaway who are looking like the MVPs for reclaim on the south side, uh, especially, yeah, yeah, there's nobody on the north side has even come close to what they've done there, like not even half, oh, just, just on half of what they've done. However, we did just get the notification for an experimental. It's a GC for plunder, and here we see it walking off to the front lines immediately ready to plunder. If we come back to the left side of the map now, Tulo's uh, earlier attempt at a beachhead has not really been very successful and they've been forced back into the water. But now with the cover of Paver's Navy, they're, uh, they're still hanging on and still very much making a nuisance of themselves, dotting in and out of the coastline here. We say they just walk up into land, but they are on the, the in the yellow. They do not have a lot of runtime there. But... The devastation on the coastline here for Aaron and I has been pretty bad. And now Tulo's making it even worse by starting a new beachhead, putting factories up. Though with the lack of eco for Tulo, you have to wonder how far they're going to get there. Meanwhile, Paver now starting on a GC of their own. They've got a lot of fire support to back them up. It looks like they're just going to walk in. Maybe they uh, maybe they want a short game, decided they don't have time for the whole thing, and they're just going to go out, but rather than control Kane, which is a bit a bit lame in a multiplayer game, or in a team game, I mean, is uh, they're going to get the maximum value for their comp while they do it and go out in style. Or maybe this is a, a genuine play. Maybe they think they're going to live here. We'll just have to wait and see how that turns out for them. Um, so many cruisers in Rowan's Navy here. You've got to think the, the zone of vulnerability, actually, we can even see. Yeah, the zone of vulnerability is so far inland there for the North team. And yeah, they've decided they really can't face this anymore. They're just going to push everything out to fight it. They don't want those proxy facts to live. Com taking a bit of a beating here. It's down to half health, but it's not the focus of attention. Trying to make it back into the water, I think. And all of these land units are just getting absolutely toasted by the Navy. I bet you didn't know, know you could toast with beams, but you can. And that that was the reinforcements there's just like a, a trickle more coming in one at a time they're not going to get anything done and uh, Tulo didn't even have time to make it back into the water before accepting that mass donation and obviously once they get these proxy facts back up um, there are more engineers coming in to help with that but there's just so much reclaim here and normally you'd say oh well it's fine Aaron I's just dropped the reclaim in their base Aaron I cannot get engineers out to here not wheel these ships around Whereas Tulo's got, what, a dozen engineers just coming in and they can take as much of this as they want. Uh, I think if you're in Aaron I's shoes, you've got to be thinking of a bit of pre PD creep. 
PD and RT. Get everything that's under shield. All of this space that's under shields wants to be full of PD and RT. It's the only way you can fight back at this stage. And it worked against that point defense and this made kind of this, anything north of this line is now a bit dangerous for Tulo, who is taking Arty fire. They're down to about 500. There's another battle going on in the other side of the map, but I really, I want to see if uh, Tulo actually makes it out here. And they've got back into the water. They are not under Arty fire anymore. And so they're going to be safe for now. So let's see what's going on here. There's a GC. A GC from Plunder has been heading south all this time. It's just met land. It, it has had naval support. Uh, you know, again, the, this sea on the, the top right is the, the mirror of the bottom left sea. And uh, Wi-Fi's Navy has managed to push all the way to the shipyards. They've managed to evict the south team from the water, except for these on the right that are just getting cleaned up still. And so they've managed to bodyguard a GC to make landfall right in front of Castaway's base. There's not a comm here to put a proxy back, but they don't need that when they just have a GC already there. And also quite a few flak tanks coming up here to protect from the gunships. Uh, again, the, the T1 bombers here, there's so many of them being used for the anti-XP defense there, but they've not even dropped on the XP. They tried to focus the flak. The flak's just taken them all down. There were a few tanks lost, but I don't think those bombers have really got value. And they're certainly insufficient to stop the GC from wiping out the whole of Castaway's base here. Only a few mass points that are kind of right at the back, mixed in with RGBs. And the GC shows no sign of stopping. There's more waves of T1 bombers here. This is where the low cost of the T1 bomber defense really works out. Um, and, like, Jib is just kind of running along behind. Like, bro, if I were that close to a GC, I'd be running the other way. And this is a naked comp. They have two levels of vet, but... If this GC turns around, this comp will melt. And Jib is absolutely counting on it being more focused on the eco. Uh, though that said, like, Jib, Jib doesn't have any base left either, so they don't have that much to lose. I mean, they could rebuild... GC's showing no Steiner stopping here. It's got so many kills. The air grid is toast. There's a line of T2PD which might be able to finish it off. It, I, it just doesn't want to go over that way though. And it looks like it's got out of range already. No, no, they're firing. It's stomping the mexes. The, the last few mexes have cast away that were right at the bottom here. Yeah, this is gone. And yeah, RGB's trying to get ARAS. It's going to be another two minutes because they just don't have anything to fund it with now. This is catastrophic for the South team. And only now do they have an answer with Castaway's own GC and a Monkey Lord. That between them, they should be able to deal with this GC, which is now heading for the water possibly to, to walk along the coast and pop up somewhere else, like over here somewhere undefended. Which is probably the best bet for getting more value from it, but that looks like a control K there for Jib. Yep. They had nothing left yet. They could have started rebuilding. Well, they couldn't have started rebuilding in the remains of their own base as Wi-Fi has set up here. They don't need their con to do a proxy pack. They've just brought in millions of engineers. They're going to grab all of this reclaim. They've got, what, nine, eight, eight land packs already, a ninth one going up. Are these just going to be building engines? No, no, some of them are building tanks. But, but yeah, Wi-Fi is now looking so strong and with their Navy on this side. Oh, yeah, and you can see the T3 missile ships, the torrents coming out. There's quite a few of them. And with the, the range on those, if we just uh, get a quick visualization, with the range of those, you can see just half of the map now is totally unsafe for the south side. However, there's also a GC just making landfall now on the north side. However, there's a lot of T2 to fight this and it runs away back to the water. 
um, which is a really good play because it's it's not a defeat for the GC. The GC can just hide here while the Navy takes out these land units. Like these land units can't stay here and live. And yeah, they're getting lasered. More laser toast. They need to get back under shields, but then that means that they can't be fighting the GC until it's already in a dangerous position. And the GC is coming back up here and it's kind of fighting them. Uh, yes, the old trick of uh, using its magnet hands there, but it picks up the shield and it, so it can't fire out because it's stuck inside the shield. It, uh, it only costs it a few seconds of laser, but it's always funny when it happens. And yeah, the T2 units are kind of streaming in a bit there. It, like, it's definitely making an effort here to not get in the middle of them. It doesn't want to get surrounded, that'd be dangerous. But if it can keep on the edge of the range, keep kind of kiting them like this, it's uh, it's going to get to the point where it has enough regen to outheal the damage. And, and I think that is now happening. Yeah, health is just going up there. So really well uh, dealt with uh, by Rowan dealing with that counterattack. And now this GC just has free reign. There's another push here forming up. But it needs to all move in at once and swarm the GC if it wants to get anything done. I mean, that's a lot of T2. And GC just already giving a quick stroke. And the strats come in. That's a, a much more effective anti-XP defense than the T1 bombers as they've already taken it down to about a third health and it is walking back to the water. Though I'm not sure whether that's uh, more because of the strats or more because it's seen how many T2 units there are here and it needs to lead them back into destroyer range so they can die again, just like the last counterattack. And this time they're pushing in all the way. They're not letting the GC back in. Well, the GC stopped trying to get back into the water, but they're pushing right up to the water's edge. They're not really focusing the GC, though, which they need to be doing, because don't forget it's it's regening the whole time they're not attacking. Them. And again, the GC has vanquished its foes and is walking back inland. And so really dangerous here. Two points on the map. Wi-Fi's uh, beach, beach head has been way more successful on this side. Look, he's even got Airfax on this side. Like, it's only T1 Air, but they're just sending a stream of bombers in for, like, basically nothing. Now, they're getting wiped out, but, like, some of them might get value eventually. It's at this stage where it's just like, I don't care. But we do see XP's crossing over in the middle of the map. A bit of an XP high five. Rowan there getting caught out by destroyers. Might be able to... Yeah, it can get close to counterattack. These destroyers are not going to last long now. And you can see another line of experimentals. Two more GCs, one monkey coming up. But the thing that's going to make a difference first, well, not if it heads back. Uh, I was just about to call out the Tsar, but the, the Tsar has run back home, perhaps not liking the odds of an air fight. But we did just have a call out for a nuke, which has come out of Raider, who has pivoted. Well, they're not pivoted out of there. They've still got a big air grid but they've pivoted into nukes. And where is this one going? It looks like it's going towards Castaway. It is usually the back players who attack each other first because they see the, the enemy air grid as the, the biggest strategic target. This is not really an air grid, but it's still a big target. Taking away two T3 HQs there, a land and an air. So that's going to be very costly. Karateka really uh, not happy about something. I don't know what. They've got two Zars. What do they have to worry about? They've got two Zars and their comm is right at the back in the water in a relatively safe place. There's torpedo bombers coming out for Raider. Let's see where they're going. I can't see where they're going. I'm looking at the wrong side. There you go. They are going for an underwater GC from Rowan. I don't know why they're kind of flying back. They must have been attacking something else. But yeah, they're going to make it so that Rowan just can't walk his GCs through the water. That 
is a, a, a nice strategy. If you can't fight them on land, fight them in the water where they can't use their head beams. This Czar is not looking very healthy. I don't know what it got attacked by, um, but perhaps that's why it was running away and I just didn't notice that before. The beachhead in this area looking a lot less expansive than Wi-Fi's beachhead, but still a bit of a thorn in the side of the North team. Um, going for T3PD, they want to make sure that no more units from the north side can make it down to the water to harass the ships. More uh, RT going on as in its counter navy role. Perfect good strat. Some uh, T3 gunship going out, perhaps going for a sneaky harass on this island. Yep. Juicy T3 mechs is there, practically undefended. That is exactly what I would go for. And if we uh, just speed the action up a bit here so we can have it as a quick aside. What actually happened is that uh, Raider did not micro their gunship at all and it died to these ASFs with no value. What a shame. Torrents over here, they are sending in a torrent of missiles to clean up everything and anything that they can reach there. And the Tsar's coming in perhaps to defend against Rowan's GC here. Gotta feel bad for Rowan now. They just cannot get a GC out onto the map without it being torpedo bombed or Zard. It has no defense against airborne attack. And so we see here, it's got a bit done, but not enough really before being lasered out of existence. And of course, this is right next to Wi-Fi's factories. Wi-Fi has a million engineers in this area. Wouldn't be surprised if he's already got some on the way to reclaim it. No, it doesn't look like it, but it, that's uh, quickly, that's gonna be quickly fixed. Rowan walking more XBs under the water on the left side of the map. Definitely a game of two halves, this one, with the, the left side action and the right side action. And if you have to compare the action, I, I think I'd say that the north side is, is winning. There's only two players left on the south side, of which it's mostly Rowan. And we have too low uh, still bravely proxying here. Like, their comms back up to full health. They, they, they've done really well to survive here. Not going to fault them on that. Um, but, but, like, obviously that and that are really quite different. The question really at this stage, we're nearly 45 minutes in, the question at this stage is, can the South team pull something out of the bag to turn it around, or will this just be a slow, grindy, attritional struggle to mop up the remaining Rowan, Expanse, Sprawl, whatever you want to call it, He's getting a lot of eco. He is getting 750, over 750 mass per tick of eco from this. Obviously, that's only about the same eco as Wi Fi on their own. So the South team as a whole is like a K mass behind, which is pretty bad. You can't survive that kind of mass disadvantage long term. But, you know, this is FAF. Surprises and turnarounds come out all the time. There could be a comp snipe, there could be nukes, there could be surprise GCs that walk around the top of the map here and come out and uh, who knows, there could be nuke subs. There could be all kinds of stuff going on and you don't know, it's not over until it's over. Again, we see GCs coming out for the north side. We see these stars kind of sitting around this one, regenning. The north team could just do with a bit more of a plan for dealing with this. Like, it's quite defended by air because it's mostly cruisers. Like, still, the Zars would do a lot of damage. We've got a Mega here that's just going to stand there and take fire. I mean, obviously, it's shooting back. It's not just going to stand there and take fire, but still. 
That's a lot of destroyers and even battle cruisers. Uh, one, two, three battle cruisers over here that are just shooting at it. It's taken off a quarter of its health already and it's running away. And obviously it's it's no longer firing back now that it's pointed the wrong way. I would not be putting my comm there if I were Aaron I. Even with shields. Especially standing still. They, they are definitely in range of enemy fire here. This is just super dangerous. They're in shields now, so it's a bit less dangerous. But still, like, there's just no, just no reason to have your con in this area. If you were reclaiming these, then at least there'd be some point to it, but it's just standing there. Like, if you power stall now and those shields go down, that you're just in a very dangerous space, especially now that the ships are actually firing on him. Oh, there you go, bit of reclaim happening. Okay, so on the south side, the uh, oh, we've seen a Zar go down. There's just roaming GCs. Like, why build point defense when you could just build GCs instead? That's some interesting gameplay. So that's obviously slowed down Wi-Fi's advance, but, you know, Wi-Fi also has GCs. And PD. Like, why have GCs instead of PD when you can have GCs and PD? If all of these got together, they could counterattack a bit. These look like they're heading for the water. Perhaps they uh, are going to go for some sneaky maneuvering and, and come up on the shore here where it's a bit less defended. But I think Rowan probably wants to be investing in game enders. They've got a lot. Oh, they're going for a Paragon. Is that the first Paragon? I think so. Unicap reached. Wow, I have not seen an act in an FA game for a while, and that's how you know this is an epic game, even if it hasn't hit that one hour mark, which people have decided that is what makes something epic. That's not what something what makes something epic. Hitting the unit cap makes it epic. So yeah, Paragon is going up. It's definitely going to help them resist the, the endless encroachment on what was their territory. But it's not directly going to help them resist the Tsars. And... Uh, what are the Tsars targeting? The nuke defense, perhaps? Oh, or the eco round it. Both of them are going to be good. There are shields. The shields blink up. There goes the nuke defense. So maybe we're going to see a nuclear launch straight on the tail of that. Tom's getting in the water. It knows there is trouble. The Zars don't chase it into the water. They're just going to mop up. Oh my god, so many T3 engineers. That is a slaughter. There's in progress GCs. One of them goes down. There's uh, support comms going down. The Paragon went down. T3 uh, power going down. And finally, the Zars go down. So that's a lot of mass to rebuild with, but hot on the tails of those. That looks like T3 RT coming in. Yeah, and that looks like the control K for Rowan, and there's the desync at the end. And the, the, the desync at the end doesn't matter, the game is already over. Yeah, with a too low control K at the same time, but we don't get the calm bomb for that, disappointingly. So, yeah. Absolutely amazing game, epic game. The nuke did come out at the, uh, the the end. We just heard the alert for that. And once you've got the nuke defense down, you're going to have that in the air before they can get another one back up. Rowan, as you'd expect for a player of their caliber, uh, the highest ranked player in the game by about 120 ELO. Held on for ages there. Not quite solo. The pressure that Tulo was putting on here just cannot be ignored it would be grossly unfair to, to say that they were like not contributing there even though they had this weird rambo yolo strat of of just giving their main base away and walking onto the enemy islands don't know what the motivation was for that but it was pretty effective they really kept two players 
pretty much busy the whole time. You know, if they hadn't been in, in this ocean and they hadn't been on this shoreline and they hadn't be keeping these two players suppressed, um, Aaron, I and Plunder, then this side of the, the south half of the map would have been as unsafe for Rowan as this side and that, you know, the game would have been over 20 minutes ago. Absolutely great contribution. Amazing duo there left at the end for South. But it was the North team that dominated. They attacked in the center. They pushed the, the land front line, even though there weren't huge land battles, that just with some raiding over time, they pushed the front line from the middle where it kind of ought to be if it's balanced, um, past these two mexes, and then past these mexes here. And, um, and at the same time, they had these mirrored navy engagements, which we commented on a few times, but uh, the beachhead here just became so much more and um, finally tipped the balance. And of course, you know, the eco lead, as we said, if you've got a 1k eco lead, you can just keep building XPs until the other team dies. That's it for today. As I said at the start, Karateka submitted this game, and so thank you, Karateka. You gave us uh, an amazing game to watch. If you want to have your game cast, if you think people would enjoy watching it, post it in the FAF Discord, the official FAF Discord, in the Replays to Cast channel. There are lots of casters who are looking at that for ideas. So go ahead and post it there. Somebody will probably cast it. If it's an epic as this one, certainly somebody will cast it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for playing FAF if you play. If you don't, you should consider it. If you do and you want more people to play, then there's two great things you can do. One is you can tell your friends about FAF. You can tell them that, you know, Supreme Commander's only a few pounds, dollars, euros, whatever on Steam and FAF is free. Tell them to join in. Tell them how amazing the game is. And also make sure they watch some videos. If they watch the videos, they'll probably want to play the game afterwards. So make sure you tell your friends about this video, like every FAF video that you see, leave a comment on every FAF video that you see, because that's what makes YouTube show it to more people who like strategy games and who could get into FAF. So on that note, thanks very much for watching. This has been Supreme Commander Forged Alliance Forever, and I've been Tufty Indigo. Toodlepip.